Hello and welcome. This is Wesley Smith, your host of Tree Service Marketing Profits Podcast. And we've got another episode today. And thanks so much for joining and, and tuning in. We've got a business owner sharing a story about his tree service company. And uh, if you're on YouTube or if you're on your favorite podcast player, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. We've got lots more content coming down the line with expert interviews, such as Brian is today, and then also marketing content coming down too that I think you'll find a lot of value in. So we'll just go ahead and get started. We've got Brian Walters with Second to None Tree Service uh, with us today. Brian, thanks for joining, man. Hey, not a problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing your story. It really helps a lot of other people. I think there's so many people in various stages of their business, right? Some people are just getting started. Some people have been around five years, 10 years, 20 years. So I think just hearing it collectively from business owners really helps people kind of solidify they're doing the right thing type thing. Um, so where are you located, man? And, and when did you get started in the tree service business? Yeah, so we are actually, our, our headquarters office is in Sanford, Florida. So just a little bit uh, east of uh, the Orlando, Central Florida area. Um, we actually got started, well, I should say my business partner started Second to None about 20 years ago um, down in Coconut Creek, which is the South Florida uh, area. And then, um, you know, about two and a half years ago, uh, he and I partnered up and started Second to None of Orlando, which is, um, you know, pretty much encompassing the Central Florida region. Um, so we've been going at it about two years now and, um, you know, haven't looked back. So that's great, man. So an existing business, he kind of, he had a successful, I guess, area of Florida he was already working in and maybe just wanted to branch out to like a larger area, maybe in, in the Orlando market, or just, did he have something there that kind of led into that market? Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting story. So I used to work for a larger landscape company, a, a national company, and, um, I lived down in the Delray Beach area, and I used to actually subcontract all of my tree work to him um, in mm -hmm. second to none. Um, so he and I built a really good relationship. We worked together for probably about four or five years. And then I ended up moving up to uh, Orlando to take a, a, another position with a different company. Um, and at that point, I said, you know, hey, look, we really are struggling with tree care. It's hard to find people that know what they're doing and, you know, do it on a level that truly you know gets the job done correctly so he ended up sending a truck uh, and a chipper up to central florida and i had helped him you know procure a little bit of business and then um, i ended up parting ways with the company that i was with at the time and you know i've been kind of exploring some different roles with you know other companies and then i just kind of got the idea of like listen we've been working together now for a while why don't we just partner um so we ended up partnering up I bought into the company. We literally had zero revenue. We had no employees because he was sending essentially employees up from uh, from South Florida to do our work in Central Florida. So, you know, we kind of started from ground zero. We had a, a bucket truck, a chip truck and a chipper. And, um, you know, I just hit the streets. And that was kind of my it's always been sort of my 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 niche. I've always been really into sales and building relationships and partnerships. So. I just kind of took some, you know, some customers that I had had over the years and started working those relationships. And then we, we built everything up to where we're at now. So we, we started with zero guys. We ended up with four. Um, we had two trimmers and two groundsmen running out of a bucket truck, a chip truck and a chipper. And um, we just kept the ball rolling. And, you know, that, that was, that was kind of the catalyst to where we're at today. You know, now we sit, you know, close to 30 employees, 32 during the peak season. Um, we've got probably close to 19 trucks on the road. So just definitely experienced a lot of growth over the last two years. Man, that is awesome. So take me through this really quick. So a lot of people have the one big question is how do you find good people? And it sounds like you guys ramped up fast in the local area. Once you kind of like, you know, put your flag in the ground there in Orlando market, a lot of, a lot of people came on board. You started attracting good help. Take us through some of those secrets, man. Everybody wants to know. Well, it, it definitely was not easy. So that yeah. uh, let's let's get that disclaimer out there. We had a lot of ups and downs. I mean, it was mm -hmm. not a perfect road. We experienced a, a good measure of failure along the way. And I think that's important for any new business owner or future business owner. Embrace the failure because it's going to happen. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. of it. Um, you know, but yeah, so we basically... 
with those four guys, which unfortunately all four of them are, are no longer with us at, at this time now. But what we've learned is that the culture within our company is truly what really helps promote more good talent to come work for you. So, you know, if you're emphasizing good culture, you're taking care of your employees. And I don't mean just by patting them on the back every now and again, take a, a deep interest in the people that work for you. And, and not from the surface, but truly want to learn more about them and, and their lives, that goes a long way. And then, of course, you have all the little things that you can do along the way. You know, you have your company team building events, your company picnics, your holiday parties. You know, there's so many different avenues that you can explore to show your team that you care. But that is the essence of it is let them know that you care, execute on, you know, those beliefs and you will attract new and, and better talent. And, you know, I mean, we've got people that have come to work from uh, for us that have worked and lived out in California and other parts of the country. And it, it all surrounds our culture. So, um, you know, it, it is something that's very important to us. And it, it's proven time and time again to work. Um, and hey, look, the people that don't fit into that culture or don't want that, that you know, don't see that vision then frankly, they might not stick around for long. And, and that's okay, because what's important is that you're building a culture for your company. Um, and, and that's just kind of the fundamentals that we've discovered over the last few years. Yeah, setting those benchmarks, this is like the standard that we have here. And it may and it may not be a good fit. And either they're going to figure it out and take off, or else they're going to figure it out and they're going to stay because they like that structure and they like that professionalism. Take me through, like, what do you, are you guys running ads for? help or you, do you have signs on the trucks or how, how do you guys kind of attract the initial meeting for people or is it just organically grow because people like working for your company it, it's kind of been a mixture of both so definitely um organic growth has been or organic uh you know employee development has been our biggest winner um you know i've had some ads out and to be honest like ads really are great if you have an established, well-known business already. And it might get you a few people in the door. It might get you some applications to review, but at the end of the day, they're still not the, the same people that you know might be with you five, 10 years down the road. What has really helped is if we have an employee that comes in, understands, buys into the culture, believes in it, then they start to talk to people that they've worked with. And hey, you know, look, Second to None's a really good company. Like you, you got to leave and come over here. Um, so organically, we have definitely attracted the better of our talent, I guess you could say. Um, but if you're looking for kind of just like quick help to just come in and help get the job done and then hope that maybe you can instill that cultural aspect into them, then definitely, you know, we've had ads on the truck, you know, now hiring and we'll get phone calls, you know, we'll be out on a job site and, you know, someone will walk up to our truck and, hey, you know, I, I used to do tree work and, you know, you entertain that interview and see how they do. And but a lot of the times it comes from the connections that you build throughout the industry. And, you know, that again, that takes time. It takes a lot of effort. But, you know, doing that will help tremendously. Absolutely, man. Thanks for sharing. Those are all great tips. So for anybody watching, it's a lot of it's organic and it's a it's a kind of a snowball effect. It gets bigger and bigger more and more viral, more and more people in the industry kind of know who the better companies are locally, I think. And, you know, marketing's a, a function of, hey, you're hiring, your your culture, your, uh, you know, there's all these different things, your mission statement, your core values, things like that as a company do attract people that feel the same way about core values and mission statement too. So that's something that's really good and keeps people there, keeps people kind of attracts the right type of people. Um, so that's awesome, man. Great shares there. A lot of people can take some good nuggets from that. So you can put some signs out, get some initial requests. But at the end of the day, if it's not the right fit, they may not be long term employees or long term help. But if they are a good fit, they're going to naturally want to stay in your business as long as you treat them well. And hey, every business is kind of a people business, whether you're talking about the clients or your your internal staff and your team. It's like, let's care about each other. Let's do the right thing. Let's just care about people. And, and the rest kind of will follow. Um, the next part is like, what do you think, um, you, what, what are you guys' ideal customer? Are you guys kind of mostly tree care or do you guys do kind of maintenance tree care? Or do you guys do residential commercial or what kind of mix does it look like? Yeah. So it's a great question. So at the core of our company is, is tree care. Um, and you know, I, I found that, you know, from all different avenues, whether it's the client relationship, the employee relationship, 
if you learn about trees and tree care, tree health, how a tree grows and develops, how you can, you know, build that tree's stature and how it looks, that all carries down to the rest of the landscape. So if you're, if you can revive a, you know, 80 year old oak tree, hundred year old oak tree and, and, you know, develop a fuller canopy, then you should have no issues bringing a viburnum back to health. So the core of our business is tree care, but we have definitely branched into other avenues of the industry. So we do have a commercial landscape maintenance division. Um, we do have a, a plant healthcare division, irrigation. Um, so, you know, we've dabbled in all aspects of the, the landscape field, but, you know, that has provided its own list of opportunities as well, because if you're, you know, thriving with tree care and you have the right people in the right positions executing the work, you know, it, it's very easy to start picking up these other ancillary services. So, you know, if, if your customer loves you and you've, you've done well with their trees in little to no time, they're going to say, well, hey, what about the rest of my landscape? Because clearly this guy's not taking good care of it. So, you know, we've been able to enter other other realms of the green industry through tree care and vice versa. You know, we have connections that we've made, you know, where, where doing commercial maintenance has led to a bounty of tree work that you otherwise might not have received, you know, especially in fields like multifamily apartments, HOAs. Um, a lot of the times, you know, their tree budgets are usually fairly decent. So if you are able to, uh, you know, get into the maintenance side of things, if that's the opportunity that presents itself, then the tree care certainly starts to evolve out of that. You know, there very few times will they want to go to another tree care company if you're already servicing their property. You know, um, so we, we've definitely seen success in both avenues of that. Awesome. What about, um, what would you say probably like your most profitable line of services is? Is it tree care? <laughs> tree care and tree service. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, we yeah. will operate close to like, you know, 60 to 65% gross margin on our tree work. We're netting somewhere around, you know, we might sit at like an 18 to 20% op profit. Whereas with our maintenance division, we're definitely more in that kind of like low to mid 40s on the gross end and probably 10 to 12 on the operational profit. So, you know, tree care definitely has its its benefits from a marginal perspective. But, you know, there's certainly a higher cost of doing business as well. I mean, you know, you might spend a total of 150000 on a full landscape rig that can service a million dollars worth of work. But at the same time, like a, you know, <laughs> bucket trucks these days are not cheap. So, no. you know, there, there is a cost to that, but the, the reward is certainly there if you do the right things. That's awesome. And yeah, we talk to a lot of clients that are kind of doing a little bit of both sometimes. And then eventually they just kind of, there's a fork in the road at some point. And they eventually just kind of go down the tree care path because it is more profitable. Um, it just seems that you, you got to have more equipment, a little bit more expertise. So maybe there's a little bit, now the competition's there. It depends on what market there is, but it just seems to be that most people kind of go that direction after they get into both. And um, like you said, they since they're already on people's properties and caring for certain things, they'll get some of the landscape business or the irrigation business, but then they realize that they can't specialize in all of them. You know, unless you're like a bigger company like you guys, you guys said you have 20, 30 trucks. I mean, that's you're probably able to kind of have little segments of the business that goes and takes care of the irrigation, goes and takes care of the landscape, things like that. But um, just being kind of, in the tree care mainly, I think is where most people head to after they get going. Now take me through like some marketing channels. Like what are you guys doing besides like the word of mouth and organic and referrals? What types of marketing are you guys doing locally to bring in more customers? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've over the years exhausted almost everything under the sun from Google AdWords all the way up to, you know, Facebook marketing campaigns, postcard mailers. And honestly, there is no, replacement for just getting out there and building relationships um you know in, in a typical day so i mean we've you know gone to the point where we have business developers and you know they're out doing this for us but you know when it was just myself and going through trying to procure business typical day for me was i i would literally hop in my truck at, in the morning and i would go find every you know potential whether it be an apartment complex or property management office that I wanted to do business with. And I just made myself known, you know, I would get in there, say hello, introduce myself, 
leave them with, some, you know, maybe a business card at first. But what I found is over the course of time, you know, three, four, five, you know, I call them kind of touch points or visits with that customer, you know, you start to develop a little bit of a reputation. And when an opportunity comes up, you're the person that they think about, you know, and, and that's, I think, key. A lot of people might have the mindset that, well, hey, I, I went in, and I left my business card and, you know, they'll call me when they need me. But it, it's about the relationship, you know, and it's getting that particular customer to realize that you're there, not just for the money, but because you care about their asset and you want to make their asset worthwhile and, and beneficial and make them money. Um, you know, and, and there's, I, I could probably spend an entire two hour segment just talking about, you know, business development and, and different things that help make that a little bit more effective. But, you know, overall, if I had to leave anybody with, with a key term, it's building a relationship. Um, you want to make it to where, you know, you are their friend and it makes it a lot more difficult to turn down a friend than to just turn down another vendor that they have in their book of, of vendors. So, um, but I, I found that out of any marketing and ad campaigns that we've done, the best and most, you know, the, the highest ROI that we've received has been through strictly getting in front of these managers and different people that we want to gain business from and befriending them, building the relationships and being there for them when they need it. Um, and that's that's honestly how we've grown it. Yep. Great tips, yep. man. Five foot rule, right? Anybody that you come within five foot of, you tell them what you do, how you do it, how you can best do it for them. That's the other thing too. Is that, you know, as a business owner, it's largely sales, right? So you can't you can't mm -hmm. shy away from going and knocking on doors and talking to people who you want to develop relationships with because that's part of business. And the quicker you can do that, the quicker it'll it'll grow. And and so just because you're six months into your business and you're having gaps in work and and you're slowing down a little bit. You just need that that right one relationship or two relationships or three relationships that's going to really just you know catapult your business into being busy for a month, two months, three months out. And and like Brian says, if you go and talk to people like these HOAs or property management companies or commercial property owners, whatever it may be, they're going to have repeat work and they they care about the health of their trees, the look and aesthetics of their trees, the assets, the property value, all that stuff. So those are relationships you want to foster, but you do have to get out, get in the truck. And I think it's a good idea to have the trucks wrapped where people can see who it is that shows up and you're kind Definitely. of those impressions, yeah. right? The impression shares, maybe if you've got yep. a little marketing write up, um, you know, cat, not a catalog, but like a little brochure that tells all your services, professional logo, phone number, website, you know, that type of thing goes a long way. Just those types of lead yeah. behinds too. Um, and and I'll say, just to add to that, because it, it's interesting that you, you bring that up because what I've found in the industry is there's a couple schools of thought. Like you'll get the guys that have no issues rolling around with a blank vehicle and, Oh, you know, I've, I've built my business on the word of mouth, like, which is great. And, and I'm not saying that doesn't work because it absolutely does for some people, depending on the market that you're in. But, you know, this day and age with the modern um, client, the modern property manager um, or whoever it may be, you know, they're getting more and more interested in, in that aesthetic, you know, everything's about social media and, and presence. And, you know, I, I did spend quite a bit of time and attention on our brand and our brand does mean a lot to me. It means a lot to our team and it means a lot to our customers. And I think that there is no substitute for doing that. Get a nice, you know, pretty logo on your truck, spend a little bit more money if you have it, and you're able to have a professionally designed logo or, you know, think about the color of your shirts and what your team looks like when they're on site. You know, do they look like that you just kind of pulled them all together haphazardly or are they all in uniform? Do they look approachable? Um, you know, these are all things that might seem minute, but they go so far, especially when you're trying to go after the larger clientele, the bigger jobs, those, you know, two, three week long projects, you know, where you might be making hundred thousand dollars, you know, that is 100% key, uh, in my mind. So, um, and, and it's not just me. I mean, that look at some of the successful companies out there that have done the same thing. Um, there's a reason why they've gotten to that level. And a lot of it does have to do with their image and their appearance. You want to be trustworthy to your customer. Well, and I think, you know, say, you know, kind of expanding on that too is, is, 
you know, I've talked to a lot of business owners. Well, I don't want to spend the fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars it takes to wrap the truck or whatever. But that's the cheapest billboard you'll ever buy is just wrapping yep. your truck. I mean, that thing it's going to see thousands and thousands of impressions a week as you go to job to job. You go to the store. You go on estimates. That thing is going to be loud and clear across you know both sides of your truck on both sides of traffic. Hey, this is X Y Z Tree Service or Tree Care. This is what they do. It's just those impressions and overall. Uh, visibility of your company over and over and over again. And that really goes a long way too. Cause plus customers and consumers and clients, like you said, the professional ones, the business ones, like the property managers or anybody else, they kind of want a known entity doing their work instead of just maybe like a hidden business owner with a regular truck with no wrap, no, no marketing on it. That may get by with sometimes, sometimes, you know, there's, there's always different um, random examples of how people got successful with, without really marketing their company. But for the most part, by and large, if you've got that slogan, you've got that company image, people can notice it, they recognize it because they see it over and over, and you're not hiding behind it, you're scared to kind of promote your business. People want to see those companies and they're they're like proud to share and refer those types yep. of companies to similar types of business owners that they already know. Tell me about this. Do you guys have any kind of like chamber of commerce presence or network um stuff or sponsored stuff with baseball or you know softball type teams or anything like that? Yeah. So, you know, and honestly, as we've kind of progressed, like I've been getting more and more involved with some of those more localized institutions, um, something that has definitely helped us along the way. And I don't know if it's I'm sure they have these in, in multiple states. Like I know some like BOMA, Building Owner Management Managers Association. You have, um, you know, I believe IFMA is, is national, which is uh, I believe it's the International Facilities Management Association. All almost every industry has a group or a trade organization that you can get involved with. And, you know, we have gotten involved with ones locally. Like we have one here called the AAGO, um, which is a, a more or less a multifamily organization. Mm -hmm. We are involved with BOMA, CAI. These are all different groups that specifically entertain um, people that work within the, the, either the facilities, the building or the homeowner uh, management associations. Um, so it really does give you an opportunity to network with decision makers and people that do go to these events to try and find reputable, valid vendors to partner with. Um, you know, in the past, I have I have worked with various chambers, um, local chambers. Those are beneficial. It you have to pick as a business owner who you are trying to target and what what verticals you want to be involved with you know if you're only interested in in medical facilities then you know pick a or an organization that's relevant to that if you only want to deal with homeowners pick a, an association that's relevant to that so you you have to kind of understand where you want to be as a business owner and then align yourself with those different groups but there is definitely a lot of benefit um investing in those and if I did have to give any advice to them and believe me after being involved with a, a number of them, you might feel at first, like this is just a waste of money. Like, you know, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not getting anywhere, but I, I was told once that the, whatever you put into those organizations is what you're going to get out. You know, if you're involved, if you join a committee, if you get, you know, you are out there putting your brand and your name and your company in front of people then you're going to get back tenfold. But if you just go there to sit during the lunches and, you know, have your food and go home, then you're, you're not going to get anything out of it. So they're useful extremely if you put into them what you want to receive back. Um, but yeah, the, we, we, we definitely aligned ourselves with a few of them that have been very helpful for us. So yeah, there's like property management associations, you know, all, all these different types of places where you could go and that's your target audience, right. As a tree business, one guy I talked to was very interesting. He was in um, Nashville, Tennessee, I believe. And he's been in the business for a long time. But one of the best places he found, because he got really into the tree care, tree health side of the business. And one association he got really big and a part of was like the local orchestra and opera association. He said everybody with a high net worth that cared about the environment, the community, <laughs> the wealthy was in that organization. And that's the, awesome. The, the local operas, the local orchestras. And he would just go. And join and he would just go and work the room and talk to people and let them know what he did. He said he got so much business, he can't even remember how much it was from that. But those <laughs> types of people don't just want to rip trees down, right? They want to do plant health care. They want to do tree health stuff. Yep. Um, Absolutely. There's a big push to that side of the industry, too, kind of coming. I think it's a trend 
And a lot of the bigger tree companies we talk to and actually work with, uh, they've added the plant healthcare, tree healthcare side of the business. And it's really catapulted them pretty fast because there's not a ton of them in every market. There's maybe a couple that do that. And there's more people yep. looking for that now. So it's a very profitable side of the business that people ought to look look into. So that's awesome. Yeah, Great points. If you guys are watching this video, leave a comment below. What kind of marketing are you doing? Is there any kind of like, you know, custom marketing or local places that you're visiting that that you'd like to share in the comment of this video? It really help us out. But um, what about, yeah, so that, so those are good ones. I mean, you got to go and you got to talk to people, build those relationships. Um, as far as like, do you guys have any like special initiatives or are you guys like trying to get more reviews online or do you guys work any kind of, how about like an email list of your database, of your customers, things like that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, we, we could probably do a little bit better in some of those avenues ourselves. Um, and I think that part of building a business and, you know, being two years old, there's still processes and procedures that we were working on putting in place. But um, something that we're going to be rolling out this year, and as a matter of fact, I, I just wrapped up a few kind of details on the back end, but we're going to start sending out client surveys. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think that those are really beneficial, you know, and and, and I say that, but I think that it's important that if you do go down one of those different paths that you do take that information and actually apply it, you know, because I've, I've been a part of organizations where they'll send out client surveys and not much comes of it. But, you know, what our intent is, is to start sending out these surveys and, you know, really understand the feedback. Where are we? Are we missing the mark? Where can we improve? Um, and then, you know, actually changing it. But you know, as far as like other initiatives are concerned, I mean, we really have not dove too far into them. There's a few that I have in my mind that I do plan on carrying out over the next couple of years. Um, this one was one of them. But honestly, even more than client facing, we've probably had more initiatives that we've been executing internally for our teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I set out to start this company, the biggest goal that I had, and I kind of felt that like, this is when we re reach this goal, I'll know that we're going down the right path, but we wanted to be able to offer healthcare coverage for all of our employees. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and not just a small percentage, but we wanted to get to a point where we were able to offer a hundred percent healthcare coverage. And, you know, we finally have reached that point in about two, I'd say two months ago, we released to our company that, you know, now we do offer, healthcare benefits. And, you know, we've extended that opportunity to all of our employees. Um, and we're working now on, on being able to offer 401k. Um, you know, it, it, one of the things that got me into going into business myself was being able to have that determination and that ability to provide for my family without having to worry about things like my, you know, being able to afford to go see the doctor, being able to you know, have retirement when I, when I'm ready to, to get to that point. So I wanted that more than anything for our team, because I felt that if our team didn't have to worry about paying to go see a doctor and our team didn't have to worry about what's going to happen when they're 60, then they're going to work that much harder to make sure that they keep that and that they stay there. Sure. Um, so, you know, more so than client initiatives, we've been really focusing internally on our team-based initiatives, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And that's been kind of the, the process over the last two to three years. And um, I think that we've got two or three more things that we're going to be rolling out over the next 12 months. Um, and then we'll probably start working on some more outward things for our clients. But Well, that's, that's exactly what you were referencing before with the organic people talking and bringing on the best talent to your company, right? There's offering the benefits, offering the, the 401k and all that stuff. People want that stuff, right? Just like you said, you don't want them to be having to worry about paying a doctor bill or whatever. So that attracts more people to your business. It keeps them there longer. Um, I mean, it sounds like you guys have implemented a ton of stuff and uh, you, you're doing the right thing. You're growing. I mean, you got that many trucks. You guys have grown to 30 employees in, in that market. That is awesome, man. That's a testament of what you guys are doing. You guys are doing the right thing out there. What would you say, just to be you know, cognizant of your time, I know I don't want to keep you too long here, but what would you say to maybe like the, the business owner just getting started out as you were a couple of years ago and you know, you've got this monumental hill or mountain to climb to get to where you want to be. You know, I, we always say, you know, you can't eat elephant one, one, one bite, right? You have to, you know, eat it one bite at a time type thing. So, you know, what would you give, what kind of advice would you give to that new business owner, maybe kind of getting started, trying to grow their business, trying to get to where you guys are today? 
Yeah, I mean, the honestly, the, the biggest thing is to expect failure, you know, and I know that that sounds weird because many people don't want to hear that or they might be afraid of that. But if you can embrace the the downside to what you go through, because it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have sleepless nights wondering how you're going to make payroll. It's, a roller coaster. it's going to yeah. happen, yeah. you know, but if you embrace that and you yeah. use that as fuel to get better, then you will get better. Um, and I, and I think that another kind of key factor is to always remember that no matter what you do, whether it's tree care, landscape maintenance, focus on the relationships, you know, focus on building those partnerships with your customers and your team, because those are the two things that will run synonymously. So if you have great relationships with your team, they are bought into your vision. They know where you are going to go and what you're going to do. They will execute. And likewise, make sure that your customers are more than just a number on your spreadsheet, that they're actually, you know, you view them, that you are, these clients are paying our bills. They're paying our, our team's wages and, our, and providing for their livelihood. Because when you look at it that way, you know, now your quality is increasing because you don't want to lose that customer, you know, for numerous reasons, but they provide so much more than just a number on a spreadsheet. So, you know, if you kind of think of those three things, then, you know, expect it to take a little time, but you're going to get there. You will succeed. And, you know, don't feel failure. Don't fear failure. Take care of your employees and build the relationships with your clients you're you're gonna do well i mean there, there's Absolutely. no other yeah. <laughs> the sky's the limit well, and yeah. what do they say too like the most successful people have failed the most amount of times too so it's no coincidence yep. it's like you've got to keep trying you've got to keep moving forward you got to be you know keep getting told no to get to those yeses to get to those relationships that do pay off and nobody sees all of that behind you in the rearview mirror they see what's going on right now so yeah you're going to have some failures and you're going to hit some dead ends and you're going to hit some brick walls and you're going to have trucks break down you're going to have challenges and personnel issues but you just got to keep moving forward and eventually you get through it i mean time pretty much heals everything as long as you just don't give up and have that like entrepreneur grind and that that hustle and that that grit i think grit's the right word right just don't give up yeah don't 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 be too pessimistic about one little thing that goes down well that this has been awesome man great great shares today where do you uh, where do you see, you know, your company second to none going in the next couple of years? Do you guys have goals of kind of getting to a certain place or amount of employees or because right now you're at almost 30, man. That's that's pretty hefty growth already. Yeah, you know, you know, I was just having this conversation with with some of our team members. You know, I, I think for us, I don't really have an end goal. You know what I really want out of our business and our company is to just change the perception of the industry. Um, you know, I want to build an organization where, you know, we're noted for our education, for our, you know, our initiatives internally, how we treat our people. And if that means that we grow to become a 10, 15, $20 million company, awesome. You know, um, but I definitely believe strongly that where we are heading is in a direction where we are going to put a mark on on the green industry in some capacity. And I just want to provide those opportunities for people, um, you know, and, and if that means we get people that fly out here from California and New York all to work for second to none so that they can learn and, and, and you know, learn from our methods and training, then that's where I want to be. You know, I want to provide those opportunities of growth for people. So you know, wherever that lands us, you know, revenue wise and financially and employee counts, hey, so be it. We're ready for it. But, you know, that's that's my goal. So fantastic. We're, we're stuff, keep man. at it. <laughs> that's great, man. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the, you know, getting there and going. Enjoy the, the journey, I think, is what they say. Not not hope for the destination, but enjoy the journey. Enjoy the day to day and just create that winning culture, man. So that's awesome. If you guys are watching this, you, you've gotten value from this video. Comment below or like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. we got more expert interviews coming up soon. Brian, I want to thank you very much, man, for sharing your story today. I think there's a lot of good nuggets in there about you know what to, what to do with your employee culture, how to retain customers, how to retain employees, how to attract good employees. That's one of the biggest things that we've seen 
um, as a kind of a, not really an issue, but just kind of something everybody's been thinking about over the past couple of years is just bringing in good health. So thanks for sharing all of your, your tidbits on that. I appreciate your time today. And um, again, if you guys are watching it, we'll have new episodes coming up soon. And uh, Brian was second to none tree service. Thanks for sharing today, man. We appreciate it. Hey, anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you.